right, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're gonna find out how exactly the pioneers made their soda. With a carbonator system, of course. I've got all my brand new stuff here, and I'm by no means like a handyman in and of myself. Heard that it's easy to do, so now we're gonna find out right here on the internet. So what I've got is a five pound CO2 tank. And this is pre-filled, and now the internet is gonna lead you to believe that it's really easy to go get this stuff filled. Well, I just happen to live in a place where it's not so easy to get it filled. I had to look and look and look, and finally found a place that could, could uh, fill, fill it with some CO2 that was uh, about an hour away. So uh, anyways, it wasn't as easy as it was for some other people, but you can look at welding shops, you can look at CO2 places that make like dry ice, and, or the place that I had my luck at was a fire extinguisher shop, and my CO2 cost me a little over $11. So that's my new tank, and it's full of CO2. I've got a fancy gas hose that we're going to be attaching to the canister. That's only if you can get it out of the bag, though. So I'm going to assume I don't actually need the bag later to just rip the bag open. But so I'll be using this, attaching it to that somehow, oh, with uh, some hose clamps. I see. For your two-liter bottles or whatever bottle you choose to use, you've got this fancy um, carbonated cap. Now you can find them made out of blue plastic with kind of a hexagon thing. I chose to go with the stainless steel, uh, even though it was a little more expensive because I'm hoping that it will last longer. And then also, you're going to need booyah, a dual regulator valve. You don't actually need a dual regulator valve. It will help to tell how much CO2 is left in the tank as well as what the output pressure is going to be. For your tools, you'll need some plumber tape or some pipe tape, some channel lock pliers, and a flathead screwdriver. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. I'll start with the tank, and I'm gonna take my, take my pipe tape and put it on my threads. And then I'm gonna wrap it around and hope that I do it right. Just wrap it around a few times. There we go, and then pull. There we go. All right. Make sure I've got an opening and stick this on. Here we go. It's going. Like that. I'll start with my hands, but I'll go to the uh, channel locks here in a bit. Now that I've got that there, open up my channel locks. A little wider. There we go. I'm gonna to try to keep my valve upright. Some people like to have it horizontal. I'm gonna go for a vertical valve, uh, but if I can. Okay. I'm gonna start with it that way. This is starting to get tight and I cannot keep it. That's pretty tight. We'll find out here in a little bit if it's tight enough. Okay, uh, from there, I'll get my flathead screwdriver. But once you've got your flathead, you can open up the hose clamp so that it's nice and loose. There we go. And then, work it onto here. Now if it fits snugly, and it looks like it's going to, you can get some hot water and soak it in hot water for a little bit. And that should help. Okay, I was able to get it on there. I'm gonna go a little bit looser because it's not wanting to move easily. Get it back there, right at the top, so that we can get a nice seal on it. And tighten down your hose clamp. Uh, 
And now this fancy top um, is already attached. It came pre-attached. I got this off of uh, Amazon. It's called Ball Valve. Uh, but now that that's there and that's there, I think that is uh, set up. Now all that we have to do is get our bottle. I've got some pre-chilled water here. Uh, just It's not a two liter, but it's just a normal Dasani bottle. First, you put your carbonation cap on. You're supposed to squeeze out any extra air that's in there. So I squeezed out a little bit that was there, uh, but that was pretty full already. We'll put this on. All right, so that is on. Now then, with your CO2 tank on, we're gonna turn the valve and see if I've got uh, any leaks. Okay, my valve is open. Uh, in order to check for leaks, I'm going to get something that suds and is kind of soapy. So I've just got some household cleaner and I'm gonna spray, spray, spray. I don't see any bubbles. Spray this and it's spray, spray, spray. Still don't see any bubbles. It looks like I've got a good seal. So from there, I'll just look at the settings here. Okay, I had to pull it out first. Okay, so now I turn it up. So my output pressure is going up. I'm at 30. I want it to be just a smidge over 40, between 40 and 45 is what uh, I like the carbonation to be at. So I'm gonna kick it up there at 41, push it in so that it can't be adjusted anymore. And with that, I'm gonna open up the valve and see what happens. Okay. It's, it's open. And uh, so, bottle's nice and firm. Fold it upside down, you see the CO2 going in. What you do is you shake, 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 shake. I've got my hand on the valve just in case I need to turn it off for some reason. Should something like explode? Because I don't know what these bottles are rated for. It just seems like it's a lot of pressure. So, anyway, just shake it for a little while. It's getting really cold. I feel like it's getting even colder than it was. But, uh, so at some point, you tell yourself, I'm done shaking this. And you shut the valve off, just to be safe. You just turn off the big valve as well. And some of these will actually have an excess pressure release valve. So then I'm going to take this off. You can get some sort of small something and kind of just barely release the pressure by pressing down on that. Or you can just ever so carefully start to twist it off. I heard it go. There it goes. I think you've got yourself some fizzy water. That's pretty fizzy. And that's how you carbonate stuff right at home.